We're talking about the Texas Tech series? <clears throat> Um, yeah, I thought Texas Tech we played really well. I was really pleased with all parts of the game. Uh, Texas Tech, big hitting team, um, good record, scores a lot of runs. So I knew our pitching staff needed to be on point. But I also knew we needed to score a lot of runs as well. Um, top to bottom, the lineup was really, really good. Um, everybody got opportunities. They made the most of them. So we walked away better after we left Texas Tech. And uh, I guess starting off, just uh, want to ask you for an update on Kenzie. Mm -hmm. where, where things stand with her after just getting the one at bat uh, the last five Yeah, games. she's got a little bit of a tweak in the knee that we don't want to mess around with right. right now. So we're just kind of playing it very cautiously. Um, and Riley Ludlum's done a great job in that spot. Um, so it's just kind of day to day. She's not out for the season or anything like that. We're just taking it day to day. Obviously, Riley, like you said, is, has done pretty well there. But just look at the walk numbers from, from last week and the patience. The, the team show, showed sort of from top to bottom, but especially from her, how, how big is that? And just uh, you know, being having a good eye and, and being uh, select. Yeah, our, our walk numbers um, were unreal. So I know now <clears throat> we're always trying to double our walks and strikeouts, and we're well above that now. Um, Riley's gotten really comfortable, and I've been really impressed with her attitude, her professionalism, her approach with pitchers. Um, She's a hard worker. She'd give her right arm for this team. You could feel it at practice every day. So to get her an opportunity, she's really making the most of it. Riley had that moment where she slid back into second, ended up being fine. Who's the third catcher if you're on a day where Kinsey can't go? So we did have tryouts. And uh, looks like it would be Miss Utility herself, Alina Torres. When's the last time she's had uh... travel ball? Gotcha. And she put on the gear and she received and she threw down the second at like a one seven pop time. And look, this is just fine. I'm good, <laughs> thank you. So she's she's anxiously awaiting for her name to be called. I'm like just. Don't be anxious to get your name called because <laughs> that means that, yeah. So she she's ready. Speaking of uh, Alina, her and Avery have been uh, getting or getting a lot of reps at second base. Just how are you seeing maybe at that spot and maybe the way they're that dynamic that's been there this season? It works really well, and I know both of them would like to just play a full game. I get that, but what, when it comes to what we need. It depends on the pitcher that we're facing and so forth. But if Alina hits a ball through a gap and we get her to first or second and it's a tight game, I can bring in Avery to run, to steal a base, and set herself up on second to score. <clears throat> Avery has shown really good defense, but so has Alina. And now Avery's offense has shown itself where she's just kind of popping things into right or left field, but she could also hit it out. So the combination of the two, I think, is works really, really well for us. You mentioned the first month of the season about motivation sometimes maybe being a factor. Has conference play started? Has that, is that no longer an issue? <laughs> In motivate? No, no. We're, um, they know where we are now. They know where we are in the season and we're starting to walk right into the fire and they know what's coming with it. So they're fired up. Um, team's getting along very well. I just, it's fun. It was really fun to watch them this weekend. They were having a good time doing it uh, and everybody was doing it. So it was really wonderful to watch, but they're starting to hit some plateaus here now. So we're right on schedule. No, oh, oh, go ahead. I was just uh, looking toward Friday's game. Obviously, going back to the Hall of Fame for that one. We know what happened last year with the, the Texas game there. Just how 
important of a step do you feel like that is to one you know get them back in that stadium before uh, you know the end of the year and uh, just to play in, in that kind of environment I know obviously Love's Field has, has been great but uh, you know can be even different over there I I feel it's more than that I we want to continue to attract attendance, we want to break records, we want other universities to try to do the same. And that's why you'll see a lot of games on TV, viewership has been great. If we sit back and think we've arrived, um, it'll fall, it'll fall away. So we, um, sounds like we're close to another sellout. And I'll never forget that moment when we were playing Texas <clears throat> it was a Friday night and the sun is setting and I'm just all the the camera lights come out and I just I was just it takes a lot to make me feel <laughs> things anymore because I try to hold everything very tight but I was I was in awe and I just I think I've told the story that um, over 30 years ago, I was sitting in that stadium watching other teams play and dreaming like a kid who would want to play college softball like one day, I hope to play on that field. My attitude was one day I hope to coach on this field. But I was a junior college coach, so that was just a pipe dream for me back then. So it's just really crazy. It was like a real big full circle moment in seeing JT with me as well you know it's and and now i've got grandkids in the stands it's just like <clears throat> a wow factor for us so um that's really it, it's nice for our team to play on it um they're pretty comfortable with the stadium i i think it's more about playing in front of that many fans um, is something that not a lot of teams get to experience at all so memorable game two conference series in um how do you feel like nicole may has been doing where she's at right now good <laughs> i think sometimes people panic because she gives up a, like a ground ball up the middle i mean <laughs> she's getting us out she's getting us wins she's keeping the opponent from scoring so it's not always about the strikeout. Our defense is really good. So if you can give us fly balls or induce these ground balls for us, um, we, we know how to get out of innings. If we give up a score, we know how to rebound and, and come back hard and make up that run that maybe we didn't make a play on defense or what have you. Or <clears throat> if a pitcher gives up a home run, we know how to pick you up. They know that. So she's doing everything we need and more. I've been very, very pleased. And then, Patty, going back to, you know, you talked about playing in that stadium and the, the atmosphere, breaking records, things like that. You know, obviously, last year, I think, when uh, all the Nebraska stuff went down, we asked you about playing in a football stadium, yeah. things like that. Any more conversations uh, along those lines? Yeah, the last conversation I had with Joe, I, if anybody would want to do it, he would want, he's an innovator, he would love to be the organizer of that. It would take some construction to do it, and it sounds like we are going to have construction going on in football stadium, and so I'm assuming his wheels are turning, and working on how to maybe make this happen. I don't know. I'm, I've stopped asking about it because I feel <laughs> guilty because we have loves. Now. I'm not asking for anything. I am over the moon, but um, Joe is a, an advocate for women's athletics and if an AD is going to do it, he, I think he would be the one. You heard much about progress over there and how how different it might look uh, on Saturday versus the last time that y'all played at home? Um, <clears throat> all I know is I've asked to practice and they say absolutely not. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know a lot because I can't go over there. And if we do practice, they have to shut down everything yeah. for that. So um, every t 
time we play, I just kind of sneak away and I walk through areas I probably shouldn't be walking through just to see the updates. But um, looks like the lower part, <clears throat> the players area is what they're really focusing on right now. So commitment is right now the um, cages, the training room, the equipment room, kind of in that order, I think. Um, and then they'll just make their way down. We, we've got to find a better place for you all. That's just <laughs> inappropriate. It's like we're sitting this close to each other, so we'll find more room and hook you guys up. What's the challenge that Baylor will bring this weekend? Pitching is very good. Uh, you can see they've won some, they've lost some, but the scores are always very, very close. Um, they are well coached. I've been going against um, Glenn Moore for a long time. They are usually very aggressive runners. They, they, um, I haven't seen a lot of short game yet. We haven't really dove into them completely yet. They do have uh, strong hitters that hit the alleys, um, but their pitching and their defense is usually very good. So. Um, we're going to have to be able to figure out their pitching staff and be able to put some runs on the board, but they're shutting a lot of teams down. You talked about uh, the, your pitching, and I want to ask you about Kelly and her continued progress. Um, you know, what steps have you seen her you know, continue to take and as she gets more comfortable in this system, working with Jen, things like that? She is very confident right now. I don't know if anybody was paying attention, but she loaded the bases and set, struck outside and normally she would be maybe a little unsettled i felt her very boss like i i have felt that the last couple outings just very confident very comfortable trusting her defense trusting our offense so she goes out there she goes to work and you can see a different look now it's just very focused and uh I feel really good with where she's at. She's doing really well. How helpful is the shift to breaking down Texas Tech for three games, Iowa State for three, and being able to prepare for like one opponent every weekend? How helpful has that been for her to kind of settle in and digest exactly what Coach Rocha wants it's every weekend? It's really helpful because you spend a lot of time in here. If you have multiple uh, opponents, it's just really difficult because you have to remember a lot and then you have to review it again. And there's a lot of work that goes on. And uh, when you have one opponent and you can really, I mean, break down their hitters, it really, yeah, that makes it a lot easier. And along those lines with, with Kirsten now through two conference series, just maybe, maybe how have you seen her not only grow throughout the season, but these first couple weekends in conference play, same thing, really confident. She she gets the ball. She makes the most of it. You know what's quite interesting is that I think I don't know because I won't look. I don't care to know. But I sometimes listen to Mr. Plank, and um, I understand that people are just appalled that we would give up a run or you know like what's wrong with the Sooners. <clears throat> You're discrediting Texas Tech or Iowa State. These are good hitting teams. So you can't shut everybody out. We will not shut every team out. If we can hold Texas Tech to a run or two, that is phenomenal. We are very pleased because we feel comfortable that we'll score more than that. So our pitchers are doing everything right and if they give up a run, they know we're gonna answer. And that's, I think you saw an anomaly here when we opened up Love's Field. And we're just kind of erasing that. We're, we're savoring the opening of the stadium. We're erasing what happened in the stadium <laughs> because none of us, I couldn't prepare them for what it was gonna feel like, nor could I prepare myself. So we, have rebounded from that, we've reset ourselves, and I think you can all see that. Time for one more? You good? No. <laughs>